Now, I don't think there's a such thing as a perfect watch, but if you're talking about where to begin with your watch collection, what is the style of watch that you should go for? I think the dive watch is going to make the most sense for the majority of people out there, partially because it's going to be versatile in regards to style, but also with these specifications, given the intended circumstance for what these watches are needed to handle. So for this video, I wanna look at some of the best dive watches under $1,000. Some quick ground rules before we jump into this video. An ISO certification is a plus, but it's not mandatory. Let's be realistic on what most people are going to need. We do wanna have probably 200 meters of water resistance if possible. There are going to be an exception or two in this list, but it's gotta look the dive watch part and kinda of act the dive watch part. And all these watches are going to be under $1,000. If you want to get into just other options outside of mainstream brands, I have a definitive guide looking at some of the best micro brands in the entire industry. We have around like 50 or so micro brands on that list, so definitely check that out if you want even even further options outside of the options that are going to be mentioned here in this video. And while you're over there on teddybaldasar.com, be sure to check out our new pre-owned section of watches. We have new things coming in all the time, uh, really trying to find some of the best points of value and just really coveted pieces. Also giving you peace of mind, all these watches are curated uh, by our team. They're going to be tested, also are going to be vetted for authenticity each step of the way so that you can get a great watch and also getting it at a really solid price. Now for most of our list here today, I wanna to focus on the range of 500 to $1,000, but I do wanna look at some watches as well under $500, even though we've discussed them in other videos in the past. And first up here, we might have the definitive choice for $60 and under, and a watch that doesn't feel like it belongs in this price range, and that is with the Casio Duro. We could look at the black dial option or the blue dial option. You have a few choices here to go for, but this watch is beloved for a variety of reasons, but mostly just given the price tag and what you're getting for the price. 44 millimeter case, 48 millimeter lug to lug, making this one work closer to a 41 millimeter watch. 200 meters of water resistance, more than suitable. The loom is also going to be totally workable, but it really, I think for me, comes down to the case and dial finish on this watch. This just doesn't look like a $60 watch. And that's on the retail end of things. You can find these for cheaper, depending on which model you go for. And if you're just going for a true beater watch, if I think about like the epitome of a beater watch from every aspect, quartz, reliable Casio movement on the inside, 200 meters of water resistance, and a price tag that something goes wrong, worst case scenario, you just buy another one. The Casio Duro is the representation of exactly that. So now going from a quartz watch to a mechanical watch here, we're going to look at the Vostok Amphibia. Now, I wouldn't say this is anywhere near the finishing of what's going to go with the Casio Duro, but in terms of having some just beloved nature to it, also going to have a novel concept in regards to the case back and how it's going to have a seal and allowing this one to achieve 200 meters of water resistance with a fully in-house Vostok 2415 movement on the inside. It's really impressive what this watch is delivering for the money. Now, I find some of the Vostok watches out there absolutely hideous for my own personal taste. Now, I may should be careful with how I describe that, but just not for me. The scuba dudes, that is not something that I could wear. But this watch here, and I had a review on this watch, this was one that I thought was pretty good looking. And this was the 120 case variant. It was the 12512. I did a whole review on this watch and it just allowed me to get back to the rudimentary forms of why I love watches. And when you're talking about 70 bucks, I don't know what the value on this is now since we've talked about it a bit more. It seems like the prices actually have I've gone up a bit on these, but still. 41 millimeter case, 49 millimeter lug to lug. It is going to be thick. You have a domed acrylic crystal on this, which is going to factor into that, but relatively wears pretty true to a 40 millimeter case, maybe a 40 and a half when you have it strapped on. When I had it on a NATO strap on my wrist, I didn't really have any issues in terms of wearability. I thought it really did the part uh, in terms of a backstory, construction, engineering, and a testament to doing something in a novel way under $100 and getting something that is mechanically powered. I think that's why the Vostok Amphibia is so beloved. It's by no means a perfect watch, but for under $100, it offers a lot of fun that you can have while also maybe having some modding possibilities and not having something you have to worry about just kind of beating up on your wrist. So for our next watches here, we have the Citizen Promaster Divers. And this is a unique watch for Citizen because I think it's them at their best. They do have some of those kind of department store design watches that really deviate from what enthusiasts want. But if you get to the core of when they're at their best, it's the Promaster line, primarily these dive watches 
that I think allow this great set it and forget it type of nature. And if you're actually a professional diver and maybe you don't opt to use a diving computer, I don't know why you would do that. But if you are opting for something like that, I think these are going to be the types of watches, tool built, well constructed, that are going to be suitable for the job. These watches, despite a 44 millimeter case, are gonna wear smaller, closer to that of a 42 millimeter case. Very similar effect that you're going to find with the likes of something like a Seiko Turtle, for example. 200 meters of water resistance, Loom is arguably the best in class. It's right there with the Seiko Lumabrite. Mineral crystal on that, so that might be one downside of these and getting an EcoDrive movement. But if you're just talking about peace of mind and just getting a watch that's no nonsense, as can be for the price range, this has to be on a short list. It's not gonna be maybe a looker compared to some of these other watches out there. So if you're looking for a design perspective and maybe having that kind of dress diver, if you believe in that type of concept, this is not going to be that. It's a tool watch built for that entry level position. And I think Citizen delivers one of the best representations of a watch going for that type of styling. Now for this next watch, I was struggling whether or not to choose the Kano or the Kamasu. But when considering the watch that's going to have the most mass appeal for enthusiasts out there, I think the Kamasu just checks off more boxes for people that are going to be looking for a dive watch or do it all type of dive watch for under $300. 41.8 millimeters with the case size, the lug to lug is 46.3 millimeters, making this one wear pretty true to a 39 and a half to 40 millimeter case, 200 meters of water resistance and the automatic orient movement on the inside, the F6922. This is an entry level movement for orient, but it is delivering what I would find from a range of deviation standpoint and also accuracy out of the box, typically outperforming the likes of Miyota calibers as well as Seiko calibers in terms of accuracy. Also looking at a sapphire crystal on this thing in a price range around 260 bucks. These are pretty hard to beat for the money. And maybe still to this day in 2022, the best entry level dive watch that you can find. So now going from great Japanese manufacturing from a dive watch, moving over to Swiss made dive watches, we have Glycine and we're talking about value. And I think the value that's presented here is just the fact that the distribution on these is kind of all over the place. So you can find these for around 400 to $600 they've just relatively went up a bit and they now have different ownership uh, being operated by Invicta. And I don't know how that's going to have just insidious effects on maybe the design going forward. But for the time being, these are still some of the better valued Swiss made dive watches for around 500 or so bucks. But in terms of what this watch is still delivering from a value perspective, 42 millimeter case, a little bit longer on the lug to lug dimension on these. Uh, they are thin too. I actually owned one of these in the past and was always, uh, pretty impressed with just how slender these were on the wrist. They do have a bit of a dinner plate type of effect when you actually have one on, but still. But in terms of the value here, unquestionable. 200 meters of water resistance, automatic Eta caliber or Salita caliber. It seems like they're maybe switching out what's available in that, but still a nice entry level Swiss automatic movement and a sapphire crystal for extra durability. So it was only a matter of time before Seiko was featured on this list. And I'm just gonna to put to rest, there's not going to be an SKX on this list here today, but I did want something that's similar, has some more modern specifications, maybe it's going to deliver in some aspect on style and just approach. And for that, I wanna look at the Seiko SRPE99 Patty. Now, Patty is referring to the Professional Association of Diving Instructors, so that's the reference here. But why I think this watch makes some sense is it's almost the modern approach to the SKX while getting some well-deserved upgrades in other areas. You have the Pepsi bezel, which some people are going to love or hate, but it's become a definitive and distinctive design option for these dive watches from Seiko. Case size is 45 millimeters, thickness is 13.4, but a nice lug to lug at 47.7 millimeters, making this one wear closer to a 42 millimeter watch. 200 meters of water resistance. You are getting a Hardlex mineral crystal on here. So that might be a bummer for some, but just to upgrade from the SKX, you do have the newer generation or somewhat newer, the 4R36 movement on the inside. And as another alternative, I wanna look at the Samurai collection. Now, while the Turtle has more of a rounded off case profile, the Samurai opts for something that you would think would go along with a name association of Samurai, more prominent and stark faceted case sides, also getting a larger handset that of course are going to have some tie in with samurai swords and how they look. But apart from that, you're getting the same level of value and just a different approach on the dive watch style uh, that's been become famous from Seiko. Loom is fantastic with the Seiko Luma Bright on the inside, very similar wearing dimensions, going to wear close again to a 42 to 43 and very similar across the board for pretty much every Seiko dive watch going to wear smaller than what that case size might indicate for our movement on the inside and a hard lex mineral crystal on the front. 
Now next up here, we have one of my favorite retro dive watch designs for under $1,000 and that is with the Bulova Devil Diver or Oceanographer. Now you can go for two different options here in terms of case sizes and they have different dial options available, but I'm gonna look at the 41 millimeter variant just because I think it's gonna have some more mass appealing wearing on the wrist. Coming at 41 millimeters, it's gonna actually work closer to that of a 39 and a half to 40 millimeter case. Now the backstory of this watch, it's really gonna stem from this 1960s, 70s design and the Devil Diver name comes from the text on the dial writing out 666 feet feet for that water resistance rating. 45 millimeter lug to lug distance, 200 meters of water resistance. And in terms of the raise markers for the hour markers, the handset, there are a couple downsides on this watch, one being the loom, but probably the biggest thing is going to be a non-hacking Miyota 8 series caliber on the inside. For some people, that's a deal breaker. For others, they don't really care. For me, it's not really a deal breaker, but I get why there's some concern with this because you're talking about a $700 watch and to not see a hacking movement on the inside, uh, getting a basic entry level Miyota caliber might be a concern for some people, but I think it makes up for it in other areas. And I think it's certainly one of those watches that actually does stand on its own of being unique in the dive watch range of under $1,000. So next up, we have a watch that's a great choice for smaller wrists, and that is with the Marathon MSAR or the Medium Search and Rescue. Now, I'm a huge fan of this watch, and I know many other people are because we sell these on teddybaldasser.com as an authorized dealer of Marathon. And I think the reason for the appeal here outside of just the build quality is really just the fact that these watches have a distinct type of look, but they also are not trying to be something that they're not. Here you're getting 300 meters of water resistance, a sapphire crystal, also getting an automatic Sleeta SW200 in the 36 millimeter variants. But I will say warning on this one is it is going to wear smaller than 36 millimeters with that external rotating bezel, how the dial is seated so low in the case because it has to actually, the hands I'm speaking of, have to pass over those tritium tubes. It just creates a strange visual dynamic that makes this one more closer to a 35 millimeter, if not 36 millimeters, but still very small for a dive watch. The dive does appear smaller when strapped onto the wrist. But if you do want a dive watch that's going to be rock solid, while also, of course, looking great on a smaller wrist, this certainly needs to be one to consider. Now for our next watch here, we have the Squale 1521. Now this is a watch that I have owned in the past. It certainly has some baggage included with this watch, just given some of the design styles that Squale has come up with, kind of being homages to other brands, and just how this watch is positioned online in certain circumstances. But even with that being the case, I think this design and the history and heritage behind uh, Squale as a brand, and when it comes to developing cases for the likes of Doxa and Blanc Pond throughout the 1960s, they do have dive watch heritage. And when you're talking about finishing here on a watch like this, uh, it's unquestioned, it's certainly a good watch. For these watches, they do come in a variety of dial colors, case finishes, you can get a polished case, brush case, or blasted case, pardon me, and they're gonna have different types of looks and associations when you go that route. Pretty wearable case, they're gonna wear smaller than what that case size might indicate. Like many of the watches mentioned on this list, solid loom, water resistance as well to go along with that at 500 meters. And these are just watches that they have their own distinct style. The color and pop with the minute hand does offer a point of differentiation and kind of the cherry on top of this design. And I think you can't dismiss these watches when looking at some of the best offerings for under $1,000. Now, when most people think of Hamilton and the khaki collection, they're not thinking of this model, the Navy Scuba. This is a model that is kind of a dive watch, but also kind of not a dive watch. But for the sake of this video and Hamilton, this is one area where they don't really shine in the same way as they do in say areas like their field watches or their entry level uh, mechanical chronographs. It still is going to be a good watch, but it's probably the best representation of a dive watch from the brand that I think is also going to have some mass market appeal. This is going to be a watch that's going to have an exception to the rule of only featuring 100 meters of water resistance in this instance. But regardless though, I think it's a nice embodiment and fusion of the khaki collection with a dive oriented style watch. 40 millimeter case, 50.1 millimeter lug to lug. So this one's gonna actually wear larger than the 40 millimeter case, closer to that of a 41 millimeter. 100 meters of water resistance, 80 hour power reserve movement and a sapphire crystal. This is kind of the combination of, and that's kind of why I like it. I think it belongs on this list is it has the field watch DNA fused with a dive watch style. It does not have the loom pip on the bezel, which might be a point of criticism, as well as just the loom in general, not gonna be probably hanging with some of the best on this list here today. But if you want something that's different, has kind of the field watch DNA infused into a dive watch style, this is when this one makes some sense. Now a brand that's just continued to impress me, although being incredibly overlooked, is Mido. 
And when speaking to $1,000 on money to spend for a dive watch, I think the Mito Ocean Star 200 has to be on a short list for some of the best representations of value for a dive watch in the range. Its dial and design is a bit safe, but it has a lot of things going for it. 80 hour power reserve movement at a C07621 on the inside and from testing anecdotally, Mito's doing a really good job regulating their movements. Um, they're one of the well-known brands that's delivering a lot of Swiss-made chronometers and they're all about precision. So I've just found anecdotally that they do a very good job in that regard. 200 meters of water resistance, sapphire crystal, and also their bracelets are some of the best in the category. Whether you're talking about the tribute pieces or something like this, they're typically going to have some on the fly adjustment, micro adjustment points, and also just really nice articulation with the links and finishing all throughout the case and the bracelet. They just feel like in some areas, more than a thousand dollar watch. This particular variant is going to come in with a 42 and a half millimeter case, but when factoring in the thickness, the lug to lug, it is going to wear more restraint on the wrist. So we recently released towards the end of 2021, a review of this brand's flagship model, the Doxa Sub 300. But when looking under $1,000, something that's going to be a bit more attainable, but also is going to have some more mass market appeal, that's really where the Doxa Sub 200 comes into play. We do have a review on this model as well, and really where this one's positioned as more of the affordable option to kind of the classic dive watch heritage that this brand is known for. This watch is going to take a lot of the DNA from the Sub 300 and infuse it into a dive watch that's going to have more conventional looks, while also still giving you the same color profile or array or choice of colors that you have at your disposal. Now, in terms of this watch, I'd certainly recommend checking out my review of this one as well as the Sub 300. If you wanna get some backstory behind Doxa and their history of dive watches, these ones come in with a 42 millimeter case, a very condensed lug to lug that's going to make these wear closer to a 40 millimeter case on the wrist. They are gonna have some vertical presence with 13.7 millimeters on the thickness, automatic added 2824 movement on the inside, so simply no nonsense. 200 meters of water resistance, nice beads of rice bracelet. One thing I will mention about this watch though, the loom is incredibly underwhelming, which is a bummer and kind of a weird enigma for a watch like this, given the, of course, backstory that's going along with Doxa. But in terms of being a little bit different, staying true to this DNA, and also getting the optionality for different different colors. This one does have its own niche in the space of under $1,000. Now for our next watch here, this is from a brand that I would consider in a very similar light to Mito in regards to the value that it's going to be presenting. It's among the same group as Mito with the Swatch Group, but where I'm from in the United States, this brand has legitimately no representation. And I actually don't even think there is like any representation, like anybody actually working on the brand here in the United States. But even with that being the case, I still think it's going to be a nice parallel in comparison for a list like this when kind of delivering value, similar again to Mito, that's Certina with the DS Super PH 500 meter. This is a watch that's just on the fringe of going over $1,000. It comes in at a 43 millimeter case, relatively thick case as well at just under 15 millimeters, but a lug to lug that's going to make this one wear closer to that of a 41 to 42 millimeter case. 500 meters of water resistance and a nice movement on the inside to match that of Amido. Certina also is a brand with true dive watch heritage dating back to the 1960s and supplying watches to the Royal Australian Navy divers in the 1970s. And now for our last watch on the list here today, we have the Tissot Seastar 2000 Professional. So this is the latest creation from the Seastar collection and is the more juiced up, powered up version of the Seastar getting some up professional specification. And it's going to be the most capable dive watch that Tissot is going to make. But in addition, you also have some superb finishing on both the case, but really the dial of this piece that allow it to stand out. One element of this watch that might be a downside for people is going to be the case. It is substantial, 46 millimeters, 15.8 millimeters with its thickness and a lug to lug of 51.4 millimeters. This watch, even with those dimensions and being a little bit more condensed down from the lug to lug dimension, is going to wear like a 44 millimeter watch, if not larger. But if that doesn't scare you away, you have a great dive watch in front of you here. Nice reliable movement on the inside, 80 hour power reserve, member of the Swatch Group, 600 meters of water resistance. So a substantial upgrade on the original iteration of the Seastar, maybe a bit of overkill, but certainly does 
the job. Loom on this is improved and better from previous iterations and is going to really meet that professional specification. It's an ISO 6425 compliant dive watch. And the wave dial on these pieces, you have a few different dial colors to choose from. I think that blue black kind of gradient dial variant is the one to go for just because it kind of evokes similar vibes or maybe it's a kind of combination of looking at an original Sea Star and then bringing together an Omega Seamaster Diver 300 meter and then putting in a package for around a thousand bucks. That's really what I see this watch is. It of course is going to be sizable in its dimension set, but if that interests you and you like something that's gonna be larger and have some more presence on the wrist, this is absolutely one to look for from Tissot in this price range. But all right guys, that is my list of looking at some of the best dive watches for under $1,000. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell icon. And also be sure to check out that blog looking at different micro brands because we couldn't include them in this video because this one was getting long. And also in addition to that, if you have other just recommendations for people, feel free to leave a comment down below so other people can take a look at that and use that as a jumping off point in the research. Also be sure to check out teddybaldesar.com, full authorized dealer of over 30 brands, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support. We also offer a warranty for all the products that we offer. So if something goes wrong, you're covered. So you can just worry about having fun with your watch and nothing more. Check out our pre-owned section. We have some great models available from a variety of brands. And also, if you're looking to sell your watch, inquire and reach out to us and we'll be in touch with you as well. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.